Today, I'm going to take you to Takeshi District in Harajuku. It's a mecca for young Japanese subcultures. Let's see what Takeshi Street is like. Mario Kart looks great fun. A Lambo just passed by. The meeting point of the world's fastest and slowest cars. Since Nintendo suit real Mario Kart, they are not allowed to wear Mario outfits. This is why people say Takeshi Street is home to kawaii culture. Crepes come in so many different flavors. They are quite affordable, maybe because their main customers are from 10 to 15 year old girls. This street has the highest concentration of crepe stands in the world. Look at the t-shirt over there. These look like souvenirs for foreign travelers. I like this t-shirt. Gashapon machine places are everywhere in Japan. They really spread across the country in the last three years. It's so crowded, it can't stop in the aisles. They are of all anime characters. So the place targets around 10 to 12 year old kids. This place has a classic Takeshita Street vibe. I have no idea how to describe it. I think this section is for 5 to 10 year old kids.
Who wears those long boots? This genre of booty cannot be found in other places. Kebab stands are trading in Tokyo. We don't see them till after in Osaka or the rest of the country. Spider potato stick is phenomenal. It says they have the longest one in Japan. That one is too long. 53 centimeter is 800 yen. We noticed that a large majority of shops in the street are for female customers. Somehow, there are men almost as many as women. Cotton candy factory? That sounds interesting. Let's get in there. The largest one is as large as the human upper body. That is another crepe stand. This is an iconic shop of Haraju culture. Marion was the first one that brought crepe from France into Japan in 1976. In the first years, nobody paid attention to it. Then it spread across Japan so fast. There are so many varieties. The shop feels a bit retro because it has not changed a lot since the 70s. This boutique was a cultural epicenter of subculture in the 80s. This place made a number of custom-made dresses for young street dancers in the 80s. That became a big cultural movement and the Takenokuzoku or Bamboo Clan dancer were named after this boutique.
scrap shop began in Japan. If a man is scrap walking down the street, he will get weird looks for sure. The food is considered only for women, but that is not the case in Harajuku. It's a mecca for crepe. I saw many male foreign travelers give it a try here on Takeshi Street. It feels very safe here. No cars or bikes are allowed in the daytime. Bikes run on the sidewalks in Japan, which can be quite disturbing. I was expecting younger people in kawaii costumes. I don't see any of them. Maybe it's too hot today to wear the kind of outfit. Maybe the kind of kawaii costume is out of date. I don't know. It was more than 10 years ago that Kari Pam Pam had a highlight and led the kawaii subculture so powerfully. She's now 30 years old and already got married. This type of candy shop is not common in Japan. Kids are customers and they're accompanied by their mothers. Useless man, diet with no hope, on parole. That is interesting. Takeshita Street has traditionally been for younger generations, but that's not the case today. A majority of people are 12 to 17 year old young people. 10% of them are kids and their parents. 20% are tourists from other countries. I hear a lot of Chinese and Cantonese. Although this street is only 350 meters long, it feels like a several mile because so many cultures and people are crammed into this small area. I think people are going to and coming back from Urahalajuku and Omote Sando, highly upscale areas beyond the street. To get there, they can take the main street along this one, but it's fun to just go and look around this amazing kind of hidden alley. It's summer and people are on vacation, but on weekends, there will be a lot more people walking down the street. This is the end of Takeshita Street. Past this point is another different world. Ura Harajuku is a rich area with hundreds of upscale fashion boutiques. Whether you are a big fan of epic fashion or not, the area over there is a must go. I'm going down the street again. I never get tired of strolling on the street. It's safe. Festive, 
diverse and moderately crowded. A lot of foreign travelers. There's a lot to see in and around the Harajuku area. From Shibuya Station, you can walk up to the Harajuku Station. Meiji Jingu is a huge Shinto shrine with a traditional atmosphere. Amate San, the main street, is not just a street, but a huge shopping area. Ura Harajuku and Amate San areas are full of amazing boutiques. Look at the boots. It feels like Harajuku. Strawberry fetish sold the first Ichigo Ame in Japan. The syrup coated strawberries on stick. Although it's available anywhere, buying it here is a special experience. What is he doing here? Thoughts from foreign country on the street are all introduced in illegally copied brand shops. Don't even try to follow them, just to have some fun. Inside a shop, they can be nasty until you say yes. This is the only thing that you should watch out for in Harajuku. Well, Thoughts on Takeshi Street are not in a real problem. Foreigners towns in Shinjuku, specifically in Kabukicho Red Light District, are something that you should avoid. If you follow him and get into a nightclub, the game is over. You drink a glass of cheap whiskey and pick up some potato chips, then the ladies go leave you. The manager show you the bill of maybe 1,000 to 2,000 USD. If you refuse to pay it, then, as you can imagine, and then, tough guy come in and they won't let you out of the room until you settle the payment. Japanese police would never try to intervene in this type of scam since they think it's a civil case, not a criminal one. I remember Roppongi in 2010 was a wild area. Foreigners' towels were everywhere on the streets. I think there are still some shady business in there. Those towels are from third world country of the African continent. They are so socially unstable because they didn't have the right visa to stay in Japan, which makes them desperate to do anything to survive. They've formed a kind of clan that has connections with Japanese Yakuza. The clan is said to have established a new network between Shinjuku, Ueno, Roppongi, and Harajuku. Japan is said to be a homogeneous country, but that's not the case in the last 10 to 20 years. There seems to be no way to get away from globalization.
charging the station there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.